I have begged for this. I've made it my mission in life to get more help for Crystal's case. So to see it actually happening was very overwhelming. I believe 100% in my heart that Brooks Houck is responsible, and that's my opinion. For me to see him walking around town, I just think in the back of my mind, it's not going to be forever. So try not to focus on the now and try to focus toward what's going to happen one day. Now to what is trending in true crime. Brooks Houck, behind bars in Kentucky, accused of murdering his former girlfriend, Crystal Rogers. She went missing back in 2015. The case has gone cold. And this month, Houck's alleged co-conspirator is set to face a judge. 32-year-old Joseph Lawson indicted back in July on conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence charges. But we don't know a lot of details about his alleged involvement in the case brings the question up should he be concerned should Brooks Houck be concerned that Joseph Lawson could potentially turn on him and become a government witness against him because Brooks Houck is the name we've heard again and again since day one this name Joseph Lawson just kind of came out of nowhere in recent weeks so what will his role be at trial let me bring in our guest, Mr. Kirk Nurmi is with us, and criminal defense attorney and regular court TV analyst, Mr. Don Malarsic with us as well. Wonderful to have you three on the program this morning. Oh boy, okay, do we think Joseph Lawson is gonna roll on Brooks Houck? Ladies first, Gisela Kay, let me start with you, please. Thank you so much, and I would say for Crystal and Tommy's sake, I really hope he does. And from all the deep diving I've been doing, he does seem like the kind of guy that you could strike a deal with. So I'm hoping he does. And I kind of think he already has, because he was first indicted on the tampering with evidence charges. And then later, about a month later or so, the conspiracy to commit murder. So it tells me he might have already said a few things to law enforcement. Mm, I hear you. Uh, Don Malarsic, let me go to you next, my friend. What do you think about uh, Mr. Lawson, please? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt, Julie. He's going to flip. I mean, this guy has no loyalty to anyone in his whole life. He has a long <laughs> criminal history career. I mean, he's made a living out of being a snitch and trying to get out of other criminal charges. He's going to flip. He's going to flip, you say. All right, Kirk Nurmi, my twin. Again, I love how we twin on opening statements in the morning. It's been such a treat having you. Um, okay, what do you think? Are we going to make it three for three, Kirk? Yeah, I mean, whether he's whether he's saying already or, or whether he's about to sing, yeah, there's no doubt about it. I think he's going to be the state star witness. And frankly, I think from what we have now, what we know now, I think the state's going to need him. Because right now we have a gun that's linked to Brooke Houck's brother. We have, uh, you know, a possible connection with that gun to the death of Crystal Rogers' father. But we don't have the whole story, right? And Mr. Lawson probably has the whole story. He can tie it together not only to Crystal Rogers, but to the father. So, yeah, I think the state is going to need him. I think he's going to be front and center stage. He's certainly not going to be a clean witness, the kind of witness you want to put on the stand if you're the government. But I think it's going to be the guy that ties it all together. And nothing's more valuable. His loyalty, nothing's more valuable to him than the hope of getting me out of out of uh, out of jail and having his freedom sure all right folks you heard it first here on opening statements the legal eagles are saying wait for Lawson to roll uh, in the meantime Kirk you mentioned something I, I have a clip from it when the prosecutor let it out in open court and it was really something the way this happened when Brooks Houck is appearing and we're talking about him talking about him and then the judge said anything else and it was like oh yes your honor we have this firearm that we're testing that we think might be linked to Tommy Ballard's murder. Let's play that clip now. I'll tell you, Your Honor, we're investigating the murder of Tommy Ballard that could potentially be related to this case. The, we were waiting for testing to come back on the farm we believe was used to murder Tommy Ballard, a farm that we purchased from Nicholas Howe, who was using a fake name when he sold the rock. 
We know it's the same calendar. There's five criteria that the, they're looking at, and so far it's matched four of the five criteria. All right, so there might be three players involved in here, possibly. Brooke Houck's brother, who the prosecutor referenced, Nick Houck, the fired Bardstown police officer, has never been named a suspect, but as you heard, prosecutors are saying that he sold a rifle to some undercover officers. Uh, that is illegal. Uh, he sold a rifle to some undercover officers that is currently being tested. Four out of the five characteristics the lab is looking for uh, are confirmed to be a match. They're, they're still testing one more uh, other characteristic, but they believe that that was the rifle that was used to murder Tommy Ballard. And this is the video from where Nick Houck is speaking to police. This was shortly after Crystal Rogers' disappearance. And here in this clip, you'll see he's doubling down on his claims of innocence and disputing the polygraph that he failed. That first test, you did not pass the test. And it's pretty clear to me that you haven't told me the complete truth to that. And the questions you're having a problem with are questions about Crystal. And in particular, the one about whether or not you know where she is right now. I've been 100% truthful. Listen to what I'm saying. You listen to what I'm saying. I've been 100% truthful. Why are you yelling at me? Well, because you're telling me I'm lying and I know I'm not. I know the truth, you know? And I've been 100% honest the truth. with you, the grand jury, and everybody else I've spoken well, yeah, Here's what I'm getting. We well, just said Yes, I have. No, you haven't. I most definitely have. And if you don't want to believe it, that's your issue. It's not mine. It's not just me. I showed you. Dude, I don't give a what your computer said. Been experience. Well, all this is going on. But that's that what guy showing up over at my house, taking car. I mean, this is crazy. Listen, they come up with all these lies about well, there's bodily fluid in your car, there's blood. There is no way in hell there is any blood in that car. I have no idea. Everybody's told me that. You know, I can speak with the state police. That's the first thing they said. Okay. Uh, grand jury. I mean, it's crazy. But I'm not that right. Okay, but it, I'm just saying this is this is crazy. My, he's getting upset, isn't he? All right, here's what we want to know, my friends. Is Nick Houck going to be next? Is it likely he's going to be charged as a co-conspirator? What do we think? Gizzle K, let me go back to you, please. Yes, oh, I think we have your video frozen. We're going to work to repair that. The gremlins got us. Uh, that's okay. Don Malarsic's video is going. Uh, Don, would you take it over? What do you think, please? Well, it, it sure feels like it, Julie. I mean, he, he's failed the polygraph. His statements are incriminating. He's arguing with the detective. And this is a good reason why I think we've talked about this many, many times. As a criminal defense attorney, you really cringe when your client makes statements without counsel to law enforcement. And this guy, Nick, above anyone else, should know. You know, the police can lie to you. They can fake the polygraph examinations. They can tell you there's bodily fluid in the car. And none of that has to be true. It could be just a ploy to get you to make some incriminating or inconsistent statements. And it certainly feels like Nick fell for that trap. And again, if anyone should know not to talk to the police without a lawyer, it should be Mr. Hawk. Right, right, Don. You know, and he's calling his brother. We all remember that video where he's calling up Brooks Hawk during Brooks's interview with police and essentially saying, end this, don't talk to them. At least that's the way uh, we understand it. Uh, Gizzle, we've got you back. The gremlins got us for a second. Uh, what do you think? Is Nick next? I think that's a question that's bugging him more than us. <laughs> you know, I think he's asking himself that every day. Is he next? Is Stephen Lawson next? Because maybe the guy that was arrested is his son. I mean, what will he have to do with it? But I think Nick is asking himself that and probably has for the last eight years. Mm. Now, you mentioned Stephen Lawson. Uh, you've really dug deep into this uh, with your YouTube channel, Gizela. Who's Stephen in relation to Joseph Lawson? I don't have conclusive proof, but it's speculated by a public records that he is his dad. And I mean, he is someone that worked with Brooks Howe because Brooks called him to try to rope him into, you see, I'm innocent in his interview, but yet they kind of messed up because he said, oh yeah, I called you so that you can call Crystal. And he even messed up the name, pretending, I don't know, who is your girlfriend again? What's her name? So that was Stephen Lawson in his interview. And his son is speculated to be Joseph Lawson, who was arrested. Mm. So Stephen worked with Brooks Houck. That so yes. there could be the connection because many of us were wondering, well, how who is this Joseph Lawson? How is he tied, if tied at all, to?
to Brooks Hauck, Gisela Kay. Thank you for that. All right, Kirk Nurmi, what do you say? Is Nick Hauck next? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And this goes back to the theory that Mr. Lawson's already started to sing his tune. Because, you know, one thing when you hear the prosecutor at that hearing, he talks about how they purchased this gun, this particular gun. Why? Why did the police make an effort to purchase this particular gun? I think it's because they had information that this particular gun was used in a crime. Mr. Lawson is probably the source of that. So I don't think it's coincidence that they went after this gun. So I think the case is starting to fall apart. And I think Mr. Law are starting to build together, starting to fall apart for the house. And I think it's starting to build together from what Mr. Lawson has informed prosecutors of so far. Love what you're saying there, Kirk. Yes, you know, this family, Crystal Rogers family, oh my gosh, do they deserve justice. I mean, I, I've said on this show, it was like getting struck by lightning twice for that poor family to lose their beloved Crystal and then Crystal's dad, Tommy Ballard, is the next loss they suffer. I mean, her mother, you know, his wife, I, I can't imagine what they've been going through. They deserve justice, all of them. Uh, Gisela Kay, let me go back to you, please. Tell me, what are the biggest questions in your mind that are still outstanding with the Crystal Rogers case? I'm very concerned about the other unsolved murders, like the murder of Jason Ellis, who was a police officer and worked the same shift as Nick Hauk, and also the Netherlands, a mother and daughter that were also murdered. Those are big questions in my mind of could they all be connected? Because there is speculation out there that they could be, and that is very scary. Hmm. Do you think the, the speculation is, is valid? Is it tied to anything that's, that's concrete in your opinion? Based on what locals are sending me, it seems like it. It seems like it's the talk of the town and it's been for many years. So wow. I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be justice for a lot more victims um, beyond Crystal and Tommy. Oh, wow, that's really something. Um, going back to Tommy, um, prosecutors said they believe they have the rifle that was used to kill him. Who shot uh, that rifle? We don't know yet. Um, Nick Halk should be worried even just with the selling of it to, to sell a rifle like that. That is a federal crime if he did what police say he did. Uh, Don Malarsic, tell me the smartest thing that Nick Halk could do right now is what, please? Well, the smartest thing that Nick could do is hire a really, really good defense attorney. <laughs> and, and number two, stop talking. I mean, he's not helping himself out. He thinks that he's smarter than police. He thinks he can talk his way out of everything. He thinks if he acts aggressive, um, he, people are going to believe him. And it just comes off as really not credible. So he needs to get a lawyer and listen to his lawyer. Absolutely. He needs to call you or call Kirk Nurmi and ask him to come out of retirement. Uh, one of you guys needs to take care. He needs some big help, that's for sure. Oh, I have to say goodbye to Gisela Kay and Kirk Nurmi. Big thanks to you both for coming on the show. Come back again soon, please.